everybody. Welcome back up to Cumberlatcha. I have been waiting for this day for so long. I, I, I honestly, the, I think the biggest thing that I have missed since moving from Florida up here is my smokers. I had two smokers down there. They were electric smokers and they were master built. I like master built. But up here, since we're trying to go as much off grid as possible and be, you know, self sufficient, I got a propane master built for up here. I've already got it started. It's uh, smoke. You can probably see a little bit of smoke coming out of there already. I don't know if I open the door. I got to heat it up to about 250. There we go. Nice and smoky. Oh, yeah, right now. So it's already going. I'm just using a, I think it's a hickory um, wood chip in there. Now this one, this is the John McLemore Signature Series has a big pan in the bottom. I'm not used to that. Mine used to have just this little tube that I put the chips in, put it in, and then the electric would heat them up. This one actually has the fire going down underneath there and has a big pan that you can either put chips or chunks in it. I got chips this time because it's the first time I've used it. I think I'm going to switch over to the chunk because the chips go really fast. But I'm going to start with something very easy. I asked you guys what you all like to see. One of you said meatloaf and actually one of the people I work with at work actually said asked me if I could do a meatloaf in on the smoker. And yes I can. I already have the recipe on my website which is craigskitchen.com. You can go on there and look at all my smoker recipes. I've smoked everything from brisket to ribs to cheesecake. Um, I think I've done some chocolate chip cookies or some other kind of cookies up here um, on the smoker. It, it just imparts an extra well smoky flavor to it but it just it just makes it a little bit extra special. So, um, start with, I got a pound of ground beef and a, a pound of sausage in there. You can use all ground beef if you want. I just like to use the mixture. I like the little bit of extra flavorful fat that comes from the sausage. And then I'm just gonna dice up a whole pepper. You can use red, green, whatever you like. And unfortunately, no, these did not come out of my garden. My peppers are taking a awful long time. And you know what? I did not get my compost bin, so I'm going to take the eggs out of here. This will be my compost because I don't want to waste any of this. But you're just going to use one pepper and probably about a half an onion and dice those up, whatever size you want in the meatloaf. And now this is going to cook for about an hour and a half maybe two hours at about 250 degrees. So it's not going to be one of those real quick meals. I'm just going to start putting these right in there as they come out. But when I turned that on this morning and I put, well, I had to put it together. I'm going to tell you what, that was a job in itself. But I finally got it together. My other one came almost partially put together, which I really liked. So this one I had to assemble, but I like doing that in a way because then when something messes up on it, I know how to take it apart and fix it. So I'm not real upset about it. But I was already sweating. It's, I think the thermometer over there says like 85, 86 degrees already. So it's getting quite warm up here. So let's get these diced up and put in. And like I said, you can change your meatloaf up any way you like. If you have a favorite meatloaf recipe, by all means, go ahead and use that. You can do it in the smoker. Like I said, you're just gonna do it about 250 degrees for an hour and a half, two hours. And actually, sorry, it's gonna be two, two and a half hours. It's gonna take a little longer to cook, I forgot, because we're at the lower temperature. So it is two to two and a half hours. Get all this in. We got so much to get done up here. Still gotta get the big trees up here at the drive where they took them down a couple weeks ago. Get them moved out of the way so the electrician can get in and get the electric meter and box put in. Of course, you guys know when that happens, it's moving time for me. We'll be up here with the camper. One thing I'm worried about is our dog Brody. You guys have seen pictures of him. Here's a picture of Brody. He's not a, he's not a country dog. He likes his air conditioning. I mean, literally, he, when I take him out in Fort Lauderdale, the big pool, he'd maybe run about around the pool. He never wanted to get in that pool. I had to pick him up and carry him in every so often, but he didn't like it, so I didn't do it too often. But when it was hot outside, and we're talking Florida, so 
He was always hot. He went out, did his business, and he came right back in. And he was done. He did not have any desire to be out there. We brought him up here a few times. And sometimes he's fine walking around. Other times he's he knows something's in the area. And he can smell it, so I'm sure. Because we've seen everything on from coyotes to possums to raccoons and everything out here. And he's just a little bit timid. He tries to hide out in the workshop. One time he got, I think he got stung by a bee or something because he went flying through the woods. I didn't think I was going to catch him. That's, that's kind of panicking. And he, he just kept going until I caught him and calmed him down. So I'm not sure. It's going to take a little while for him to get used to it up here. So I'm going to add some more things to this. I got three eggs. And I'm just going to put those in. And I'm going to put the eggs in the compost. They'll compost down. And once I get chickens, I'll dry them and I'll crush them up in the food processor and feed them right back to the chickens so they get their calcium. Y'all see a bee up here above my head? Something's getting me. And then I'll share with them. I think I did fall in. Let me mix this up a little bit. Get this mixed in with the meat. But like I said, you can smoke just about anything that you'd like a little bit of a smoky flavor to. I know I did deviled eggs one time. And I actually got the eggs spoiled, cut, you know, cleaned and cut in half and just put the whites in the smoker for probably about 45 minutes and then did the mixture and put on it. Had a really good flavor to it. I think my most exciting was my, when I did the uh, cheesecake. I did not think that was going to work. I had no hope. But here's a picture of that cheesecake. It was beautiful. The link is on my website again. You can I'll put that down below. You can make it in the oven, but that cheesecake in the in the uh, smoker was great. Okay, now I'm going to put about three fourths cup of uh, breadcrumbs. I'm using a seasoned garlic and herb one. It's about three fourths cup, and probably about a teaspoon of salt. I got it open. Never had that open all the way. There we go. I can get some salt out of there. Yeah. And a teaspoon of cracked black pepper. Now ketchup, we're going to put about a cup and one fourth. Well, one and a quarter cup. Haven't even opened this one yet. Now try not to make this real wet because you're basically cooking at low temperature so it's not gonna steam a lot of that out, of the moisture out. So higher temperature, higher cook would steam the meat a little quicker and get some of the juice out. So you don't want it real wet. So I'm gonna put Maybe about a half a cup of milk. Maybe a little less because this is really wet looking. I'm going to stick this in the cooler because I don't want it to be bad. Just going to stir this around. All right. Now we're going to put about a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. Well, as Grandpa would say, my who's your sister sauce? About a tablespoon. We're going to put about a tablespoon of onion powder, and this is Mom's dried onion powder. I think you all just watched that video. And a lot of people were asking if her house smelled really bad, like onions. She said no, it didn't. And she said she did have a vanilla ca candle burning, so that might have helped. But she said it wasn't overwhelming. It just, you know, smelled like onions, but not real bad. Okay, we got a tablespoon of that, a tablespoon of garlic powder. Where did I put garlic powder? I know I just had it. Oh, dee -dee. oh it's way up there. Get that in there. And this is my brisket rub. I use this for a lot of things, smoking, even my chicken. I do whole chickens in here. Those turn out amazing, too. Um, I'll put the link down below. 
and I've also put it in, in the description down below, the recipe for it. It's just a mixture I make up. I make a big batch of it up at the beginning of the spring, and then I use it throughout the year. I usually have to make it two times, sometimes three times, depending on how many times I'm using the smoker. And I'll tell you what, sometimes I'll get on a kick, and that's all I use is my smoker. I think I lost, it was weird, I think I lost like 10 pounds in two months when I got my other smokers, because that's all I did was smoke meat. And, oh, that stuff was good. Okay. I think I got everything here. Worcestershire, black, yep. Okay. So that is all the ingredients, and I'll put those down below, of course, in the description and on my website. Let me get my knife out of the way. Now, I'm going to just use an aluminum pan. You can use a cookie sheet, however you like. I like this, so if there's a lot of fat, it's not going to drip down. Unless I'm cooking, like beans or something underneath it, especially with my uh, pork roast or pork shoulder, I will cook them right on the grate. That way all that fat and juice comes out of it and drips down into my cowboy beans, which is going to be the next video you guys are going to see. But I'm going to do it with this, and I don't want the hamburger meat juice going down in there. I don't know why, but I just, I'm not going to poke any holes in this one. But when you put it in here, make sure you put it in and get it pretty flat. You're not wanting a real thick meatloaf because you want as much surface area to absorb that smoke. So we're not going to leave it real tall. I like to just get it all put out here. I spread it all the way through the whole pan. And then I'm going to go back and just bring it about an inch in from the pan. That way, if they're on the fat disperses from the meat, it's going to go on the outside and not kick up on top. So we'll get it a little bit of out of there. Now, I'm not going to put my sauce on. One reason is because I haven't made it yet. But I don't want to put the sauce on now because I want the smoke to get into the meat. And then afterwards, let me use this other one. After that, I'll put the uh, sauce on and the glaze, and then I'll let that get smoky flavor too. So you got two layers, it's gonna have smoke on it. And all the sides. So let's get this in the smoker. Whew. And I'm gonna have to add some more chips there. I'm gonna put this one right up there. And I'm putting it at the top because I want it to cook a little faster than the beans when I put them in because heat rises, so it's gonna be a little bit warmer up here at the top. I'm at about 225. I'm going to crank it up just a little bit. And actually, I'm going to put some more wood chips in real quick. Crank it up. Now, this tray does come out, but right now I'm just going to toss them in this way. And I like this smoker because my old smoker just had one door so I'd open the door and all the heat came out. This way the heat's staying in in the main box and we're just working down here. So we're not losing all the heat. Okay. I'm going to let that go. You guys want to see some more smoke coming out of there. And set this aside and we're going to make our glaze that goes on top. And with that I'm going to use about a cup of ketchup. Okay. I'm going to stick this down in the cooler. And now we're going to get, uh, with my brown, oh, it's right in front of me. This is my brown sugar. We're going to use about a half a cup of brown sugar. There we go. And I'm using the brown, dark sugar, dark brown sugar. The difference between light brown sugar and dark brown sugar is literally this, molasses. It has more molasses in it. So the more molasses in it, the darker your sugar. So if you have light brown sugar and your recipe calls for dark brown sugar, and you have some molasses, put some molasses in your brown sugar, mix it up, you got dark brown sugar. Just that simple. And talking about molasses, I'm going to put about a fourth of a cup in here. This is going to give it the... Smoky molasses flavor.
And my favorite thing, where's Jack? Look who I brought. I brought Jack. This is totally optional. I'm not sure why you'd want to make it optional. But I'm going to put about a quarter of a cup of Jack in here. Now, this is the Tennessee honey. You can use any kind of whiskey, any kind of bourbon you want, and it'll make it just as good. Now, I'm also going to put about two tablespoons. See, I told you that smoke. It's going to start smoking. I'm going to put about two tablespoons of my rub in here. Whoops. And that is it. And let me get a new spoon that we got used on raw meat. So that's just that easy. That's our glaze that we're going to put on top. We just want to mix it real well. Whoops. Not that well. It went way over here. Ooh, that's good. Jeff got on my finger. So there is our sauce or glaze. This is what we're going to pour over top of the meatloaf. I'm going to wait till it's probably about an hour and a half in. So it's about 30 to 45 minutes left. So for right now, I'm just going to set this over here aside and wait. And I'll bring you back when we're going to put the glaze on. Talk to you again soon. Okay, everybody, it's been about two and a half hours, and <laughs> the meatloaf smells delicious. I did put a glaze on it twice. I think you guys saw that. We we'll did a little video clip of that. I'm going to pull it out of the smoker. Okay. There we go. And... There is our smoked meatloaf. Let me give you a little view of it if I can get it picked up here. Nice and sharp. There is a little bit of fat around the outside. No big deal. It'll eat just fine. Let me get the uh, cutting utensils out here. I'm dying for this and smelling it all day long. I'm just going to cut a piece out of here. Now you want to make sure that you have the temperature and you meet at least 165 degrees. So that's what I was monitoring. And if I look at here, let me get my thermometer. We'll turn that on. And it is registering 171. I'm just a little bit over, but that's fine. It's not going to hurt. And you can see the smokiness and the char around the side. It looks delicious. Peace out here. Some of that fat off the edge there. And I am not going to waste that little piece of meat down in there. 
Mm. Wow. I miss my smoked dinners. Let's peek back there. That is delicious. Now, you could leave it sit for about 15 minutes. That's what I usually do. But I want to cut into it so I can show you guys. It's nice and done all the way through. Got the little brown layer. You could almost see the smoked layer on top of the meat. And that was there before I started putting on the glaze. Now, I do have extra glaze. I always save a little extra. So if you want to put some extra on there, you can. But just remember, if you are smoking and you haven't done this before and you're just starting, it 100% depends on the temperature outside. When the sun is beating down on that and it's 900 degrees like it is up here today, it's going to heat up a lot faster. Now, if you're going to be doing it in the wintertime, when it's a little colder, you may have to put some insulation around that thing to keep it up to temperature because it's just a metal box. So the environment around totally makes a difference. So I've kept it between 220 and 240 most of the day. So that's what we, I like to keep it out when I do this slow smoke. So give this one a try. And don't forget to watch my next video. I did my, did my smoked cowboy beans. That'll be coming up. And until next time, love y'all. Take care. God bless.